In this video, we are getting back in action on some Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. And, uh, you know, without further ado, I guess we can just dive right into it. So, hey, I am here in my computer screen, which I will show you in just a moment. I'm adding a pause for suspense. I honestly just wasn't ready to switch windows yet, but here we go. All right, I have the Pico CTF 2022 website opened up, picoctf.org, and I'm cruising along here. We've got the reverse engineering category up next with 100 points called unpackme.py. Let's see what we're up against. You know that .py extension can clue us in. We're probably gonna be working with a Python program. It says, hey, can you get the flag? reverse engineer this Python program and Python script. Since it is a Python script, I'm gonna assume we have the source code. Let's move into that reverse engineering directory, create a directory for unpack me pi, and let's go ahead and w get this thing down. All right, we do have a Python script denoted here. Let's go ahead and open that up in a text editor and, ooh, we're doing some interesting thing here. Import base64. Okay, so we're gonna work with the base64 module in Python. From cryptography.furnet, we can import furnet. Okay. Is cryptography, is, is that a built-in library? Python cryptography library? cryptography package. Ooh, you might have to pip install it if you don't have it already. Um, if you are using Python and you haven't installed uh, libraries before, you can use pip, or the Python package manager, the same way we use sudo apt, the same way we use apt and aptitude and apt get to install stuff on Linux. There is a package manager for Python, getting more code, getting more languages, libraries, modules, etc. cetera. Uh, pip is how you can do that. Simple pip install cryptography. Um, and this is actually the one, hey, that is using that cryptography.furnet submodule and importing that sort of class here for us. Anyway, we have a payload that is represented as a byte string. Um, it, it filed, when we ran the file command previously, it told us, hey, we have very long lines, like 305 characters all the way in the column, way, way over to the right. So... What they do is they take a key as a string, correct staple, correct staple, correct, and I'm assuming that's going to be the length of the flag because they'll probably use this Furnet key base64 to get plain data. And then it ends up executing this, mm, which is interesting to me because exec will run Python code. It'll take in an argument. It'll take in like a string representation of literally Python code to be ran and executed, hence the name exec. So uh, part of me wonders what this code is that was going to end up being ran, but I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna just trust it because I don't know what's going to be in this. You never know if you're doing malware analysis or if you're doing some reverse engineering, what is packed and included in here might just be dangerous maybe stuff you don't want to execute. So I'm gonna comment that out with that Octothorpe, and I'm actually just gonna modify this to print out that decoded plain text present here. So let's try it. I'm gonna run this script now that I've made that slight change, and let's see what it does. It asks, what is the password with our input? read in from the command line and or read in from standard input and we check if the password is equal to battery horse <laughs> it'll just print out the flag for us so that is our flag nice great let's carve through that and take out the color so we can say that is the flag and we can finish that challenge with again, hey, some cool fundamental reverse engineering, all we really did was take advantage of the fact, hey, we don't know what could be running in that binary data that's all decorated with base64. They base64 decoded, or excuse me, encoded it after their key, and they used Fernet to maybe do some weird math, uh, obviously cryptography in a way, decrypted the payload, which could very well have been encrypted with this key, and because that was real code to run, like literal plain text Python code that could be executed. We didn't want to detonate that. We didn't want to run it. We just wanted to take a peek and explore what it really was just by simply printing it out onto standard output. 
so we could review it, so we could analyze it. And that is how we solved that challenge. That is how we made sense of what this unpack script was, and that is how we finished up that challenge in the reverse engineering category. Now we're gonna be going back to cryptography and having some more fun in that playground. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope there was something to glisten out of it. Maybe some nuggets, maybe some sound bites, some insight here and there. And if you've been sticking with me through this whole series so far with Pico CTF, we're what? This is this is episode video 28. Goodness, there are 66 challenges in Pico CTF so far that I am of and I'm aware of, and we're almost halfway. Um, and we've gotten through a whole lot of, hey, good training wheel stuff to get familiar with and associated with capture the flag training and activities, etc. But maybe someday soon we'll get into some of the tough stuff and that'll be a ton of fun. <laughs> I don't know, digging into some good stuff uh, in the next couple of videos. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed these videos. If you do, please do press those like buttons, leave a comment, subscribe. I love it. Thank you, everyone. Take care.